I wasn't hitting record. Oh no. Hi guys, welcome back to another video or your first video here, I don't know. Welcome if you're new here and welcome either way. So this video is going to be my September uh, wrap up. Possibly I called my last month September wrap up when I was filming. I'm bulk filming because I'm a little bit behind on my video schedule. Um, like things have not been great mentally, so I took a little bit of a break but I'm back on it now, or should be, um, or I shouldn't put so much pressure on myself. Anyway, I think that is really reflected in the types of books that I was picking up during the month. A lot of them are comic series that I just found on like Webtoon or like sites like that where I can just scroll through them and just have a light, easy reading, nothing too brain taxing. But it did mean that I ended up with quite a number of books I rated quite lowly. I just needed some easy reading this month. So let's get into it. So I'm going to start off with two DNFs. These are both comic series on either Manta or Webtoons. I can't remember which app I used, but I didn't like the art style. I thought that the story wasn't really compelling. The characters were assholes. Just like, I honestly, at this point, I'm nearly at the, no. I'm finished with October, it's November now, and just at this point, I can't remember enough about them, just that I did not like them. The first one is Timing. Again, characters were assholes, didn't like the art style. And the second one is The Tiger That Swallowed the Moon. This one, I think I liked the art style. It's still a bit cartoony for me. That's my one complaint about sort of webtoon Manta style comics is that they're very cartoony. But I think this one was, the plot was lacking and I didn't like the characters, so those two I DNF'd. Next on to a few one stars. So I ended up finishing out the Belinda Blink series or at least the number of books that are currently out and I gave them both one star like on their own. They're not good books. I don't read these because they're good but they are read by the podcast My Dad Wrote a Porno. So and that podcast I give five stars. It's amazing. And obviously I can't really give you much of what's going on in book five and six because that would spoil the first books. Essentially the first book follows Belinda as she joins this pots and pans company and wants to work her way up in business and has sex with everyone that she can. And I honestly don't know what to say about the plot of these last two. The plot just went so off the rails bonkers batshit that I immediately actually started rereading the entire series because I was just like, I need to wrap my brain around what just happened. It feels like a coherent story got put through a blender and I just, <laughs> I just don't know what to think. And they're gonna stay at one stars because they're not technically good, but my enjoyment of the podcast is great. Next, we have another comic series that I gave three stars too. It's my only three star of the month and that is Dear Door. I did technically finish volume one of this comic series but I thought the art style was a bit weird like in terms of like body and facial proportions I thought that it didn't really work. I thought that the consent was a bit sketchy. I thought that the like level of violence was a bit high just for the sake of it and I feel like the relationship was like I might be bringing that down to a two actually now that I'm really thinking about it. To me it was just a fine read, nothing that I'm going to think about rereading or like yeah it just wasn't very good so three stars. Probably two stars actually. Oh I can hear Yappy Dog outside so that's gonna set Reg off. Oh well. Anyway another Manta comic was Disobey the Duke If You Dare. So I don't normally read the ones that are marked as unfinished just because it does take a while for each chapter to come and then you're reading it chapter by chapter rather than volume by volume. But this one was just so, it was clearly being pushed in the advertisement of the app. So I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna give it a go. And it was an enjoyable read, but it just felt like a knockoff of one of their other like big selling series, or at least, you don't buy them individually, you sort of invest in the app. But like the series that I think a lot of people joined the app for and they were really pushing in their marketing on YouTube was Under the Oak Tree, which is a series I really enjoy. 
and this just felt like it was ripping off the plot line of Under the Oak Tree but just not doing it as well. The only sort of good like in comparison to the Under the Oak Tree point that I have is the fact that this book is more diverse. I think that it has more racial diversity in its main cast of characters and um, more sort of LGBT diversity. So that is good. Although the setup is so similar to Under the Oak Tree, it essentially follows a woman who is married off um, for the essentially convenience of a very abusive father and she has siblings that she's trying to protect and the duke that she is married to is originally seen as this really scary individual that she comes to really love and appreciate. So very very similar I thought that the sort of like I'm so hideous you can't see me which is where the disarray bit comes in um part was going to last longer I thought that was going to be a continued thing I thought it was going to be a retelling of that one Greek myth what's it about it's one of Aphrodite's sons Eros and he takes a wife but she's like she can have anything she wants but she can't see her husband I'm pretty sure that's how it goes anyway um it felt like it was going to be a retelling of that story which I was really interested in seeing but yeah that plot line despite being in all the marketing and all the like this is how this book is was dropped very very fast into the series and yeah just didn't work for me I thought it was an enjoyable read but fine again might be learning that racing but uh for now it stands as a 3.5 so again, all of these next ones are webtoons and I'm pretty much going to have the same criticisms about all of them. They were really enjoyable reads, but I do think that the art style is a little bit too cartoony to be some of my favourites. So I have Biting the Tiger, which is essentially a story about Shinigami or Gods of Death and Resurrection. And it's very much a story about a slightly arrogant young pop star and this really stoic person slowly bringing out the best in each other and learning to really open up to one another and it was really cute i gave it four stars yeah a really enjoyable read the next one i have is one i've just been talking about and that is under the oak tree which is essentially the series that because of the marketing got me into webtoons at least and I'm going to be honest, this series does have its problems. Do I read? I'm pretty sure there's two volumes. I've read all the volumes that there are out. I can't remember how many there are. This series does have its issues, especially with consent and withdrawal of consent. But those issues didn't really tarnish my enjoyment of the series overall, despite the fact that I recognise that those are big problems in real life. So essentially you have like I said before, a woman with an abusive father, she's shipped off to a marriage that is beneficial for him. She essentially thinks that she's like swapping one abuser for another and it's her slowly coming out of her shell and learning to trust people and learning to trust herself in a way and something I also really love is the fact that she has a very pronounced stutter and it's like not treated as like oh the one flaw in her personality and I really like the way that she I don't I don't want by the end of her series to, for her to like overcome her stutter I think that would be really in poor taste but I love the representation of someone who speaks in a certain way and gets looked down upon by some people but for some it like it doesn't matter because it doesn't and I really loved that exploration throughout the story so I do recommend but it's not finished at the moment so I'm um, it's this is why I don't watch series where an episode comes out every week because I'm like every time there's a like it comes out in chapters so it's a very quick read and it's like I mean obviously the artists have to take their time and make it beautiful and blah 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 but like I'm impatient <laughs> oh well and the final four star that I have is volumes one and volumes two of Bloody Sweet Again, another um, webtoon comic. So I really enjoyed the plot of this 
And over the course of these two volumes, you can really see the artists get to grips with their art style and really polish up what they do. I really loved all the character designs. Essentially, it follows a vampire who has been locked away and the shy bullied girl who accidentally sets him free and then essentially ends up having to be his owner or master and look after him. And I just loved the exploration of characters, the exploration of like what bullying does to a person and seeing these characters really come out of their shell and really come to like deal with their mental health issues. Like she really wants to die at the start of this series and I just thought that that plot was handled so well and so so gently but in this sort of like fun context I feel like the series really fleshed out a really diverse group of characters that I really came to care for and were all really distinct and interesting so I gave this series four stars. So on to my two five stars and I do swear that I do have a book in here it's not just comics but I read this is the final comic I'm talking about. I've re read My Red String of Fate, volumes one to three. And this one is getting a five star despite of its art style. Again, slightly too cartoony for me, but it was just such a gripping read. It really just consumed my life for the time that I was reading it. I, I just loved it so much. It follows a girl who is a human, and she ends up falling into this fantasy world and becomes a priestess and a healer and about the characters that she meets who were originally characters in a book that she really loved when she was on earth and how she's trying to help these characters by helping the story progress but things keep on going off the original and she sort of slowly starts to deal with that and like I think this is also a book about challenging your expectations of someone and looking more into someone than what you've just been given and told and making up your own decisions and own mind and like also allowing yourself to find happiness allowing yourself to choose your own fate and your own destiny and I just really loved this. I loved the huge cast of characters, I loved the diverse group of uh, demons that she meets and lives with and it was just a lot of fun. And finally we have the last book that I, well not the last book I read in the month but my favourite book of the month is Legends and Lattes. So this is described as a high fantasy book with low stakes and essentially it's it was so refreshing to have a high fantasy book where it's not these few young people are fated with the like with the fate of the entire world and the entire world is going to be destroyed if they don't sacrifice themselves in blah 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 and it just follows viv who is an orc she is sick of the life that she is the cards that she's been dealt and the life that she's been living and she is sick of always knowing that her life could like could come to an end by being stabbed in the back constantly having that feeling and she decides I'm gonna open a coffee shop and she does and just the colourful cast of characters the diversity this book is queer Viv falls or slowly starts to form a relationship uh, with someone else who works in the cafe and just like the d diversity in species and body size. Like there was no body shaming in this, which I loved. Viv is described as large and heavy and muscular and imposing. And she spends none of this book like feeling shame or dealing with shame to do with her size. And there's no one who makes fun of her for her size. And that was so refreshing to read somewhere who was just, they, she knows um, of her stature and it's just a fact about her.
and it's never presented in a shameful way. The descriptions of food and coffee and tea and this cafe, like you really felt like you were there. This sort of book really lends itself to really lush descriptions. I feel like a lot of authors, especially when they're first starting out, fall into the trap of only describing what the characters see, where here it was about smell and uh, the feeling of the pastry and the textures and the tastes and like all these other senses and it really felt like an immersive experience. And also the plot was really wonderful to read about this person, or Orc, restarting her life and learning about starting a business and like forming friendships that don't rely on battle skills and I just I just really really love this book and I will continue to reread it because I love it so much. And there you have it, I don't actually have any books to hold up this month because I read all things on my phone or my computer so just me for the outro and yeah I will see you very soon actually because I'm just about to film my some of my October videos and I will see you in my next video. Bye.